Hi guys, it's Rob Moringa here. I hope you're doing very well. Um, if you haven't already, and I'm sorry for the repetitiveness and tediousness, uh, an insisting insistence upon subscribing and pushing the little bell icon and liking my videos. Like with this thing down there. Um, but the YouTube algorithm really likes it. So today we're going to talk about suicidal thoughts, which makes my little caveat there seem even more distasteful than usual. So, if it's okay with you, I'd like to start this with a little guided meditation, maybe like a minute or two, because I assume you're, <laughs> I assume you're only watching this video if you're contemplating suicide or you know someone who is. Um, and I think the best way is just to stop trying anything for the next minute or two. And so, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to keep my eyes open to keep the video more engaging, but this only last a minute or two. And skip forward if you can't be bothered with the guided meditation thing. Um, but if you close your eyes, and become aware of the, the kind of subtle light show going on behind your closed eyelids. Do you know what I mean? It's not dark when you close your eyes. Come aware of that. Try and let the body breathe. You know, don't go, right, this is meditation, this is serious, one, two. Try and let the, <laughs> let the body breathe. So just let the breath come to you. And then just become aware of any sensations you've got. If you're feeling suicidal and you manage to get your attention off your thoughts for a little bit, I imagine it's a very... It sort of feels like you're filled with cement, you know? Purely physiologically speaking. Let's try and forget about the thoughts for a minute. Which, depending on your experience meditation... Uh, may sound ridiculous, may be quite easy, but, you know. <clears throat> what are the pure physical sensation? How do you know you're suicidal, apart from the fact that you're thinking about it? You know? So just reflect on that, please. For a, a few seconds. And now, please become acutely aware of what you can hear around you. And I like, I hope that as soon as I said that, there was a little shift and you were suddenly focusing on what you could hear, even if only for a second, um, rather than focusing on the cyclical <laughs> um, collection of images and language in your head that want you dead. <laughs> um, everyone's their own worst enemy, you know. So just, let's just hang here for a minute. Your body's breathing. You're not chasing your breath, it's just breathing itself, which it does if you let it. And if you really pay attention to it, you can't actually focus on thoughts. Because your attention can only be, especially if you're a guy, uh, one place at a time. Let the body breathe. Check in with your body about the purely physiological state and focus on sounds. Okay, that took longer than a minute, but we'll leave it there. Please open your eyes if you had them closed. So, I have been where you've been uh, more than once. I won't go into too much detail because I promised my mum I wouldn't anymore, but... <laughs> um, but I do know where you've been. Twice I know where you've been. Um, the most helpful thing someone said to me was, please speak to someone. Because you know, it's like, it, if you're suicidal, then there's a 
high probability you've been on a downward spiral for weeks, months, years, you're on a lot of drugs now, you've taken a lot of drugs before, you're coming off a lot of drugs. Um, and that's just one of the things that could be making you cloudy at the minute, making your head cloudy. You might not have got out of bed for four or five days. You, um, you know. So the four words, please speak to someone, really got through to me. And took me about the last time this was an issue for me, which I'm determined that it will not be anymore. It took me about a day and a half to get the courage just to book an Uber to take me to A&E and, and, and try and face, face the demons now. And they have people there who are expertly trained at talking to people who are suicidal. They may not understand your condition. They may not have even heard of your condition. But they will listen. They're there for you to just vent at for two or three hours in a rambling, disorganised way. Um, and they will, as soon as you're not alone in this, it's a lot easier. The hardest bit is the first step, even though it's not that hard. Just booking a taxi to A&E. And they're used to it, you know? Don't be, don't be embarrassed. They're like, yeah, take a seat. You know, pretty much. Um, <laughs> so that would be my first and main bit of advice. Is just get it out of your room, out of the dark room of your mind, out of your head. And get it in somewhere else where they want to help. And they do want to help. It's their job to help and they know how to help. And they can refer you on to... Uh, who you need to go and see, you know? Um, the second one, without sounding like a guilt trip, uh, you will devastate everyone that you know <laughs> if you commit suicide. Like if your best friend or mum or dad or sister or brother or niece or nephew or uncle or auntie committed suicide, you wouldn't be able to brush it off very easily. You would, again, especially if you didn't know how to meditate, you'd be consumed by uh, the guilt and the thoughts I could have done something different I should have been there for him I could have seen the signs um, etc I actually think people are a little bit misguided when it comes to that like so people who kill themselves they've been really pushed you know maybe by 10 things maybe by 20 things maybe by one thing so when people hear about the suicide it's a little bit egotistical almost to think Oh, I could have saved them. If only they'd talk, talk to me. Uh, anyway, that's a little aside. Not to slag off, not to criticise people who are trying to prevent people from uh, suicide. <laughs> so. Yeah, hopefully a bit more relaxed because of the meditation. My very heartfelt and strong, and I would say wise and humble, uh, <laughs> humble advice would be go to A&E. Okay, just go and tell them you're thinking of um, committing suicide. That's by far, in a way, the best thing. Because if you think about it, most people you know don't know how to handle that conversation or that situation. And then why? And why should they? How should they? They haven't been trained in it. So if you ring up a friend or I guess you've got to tell someone, but to be very careful who you tell your most level headed uh, non neurotic medically knowledgeable friend let's say but if you ring up your parents with this shit saying you're just about to do it they're not gonna it's very unlikely that they will um, respond in, the, in a calm and helpful way understandably uh, like they would in a &E. you know and there's way more to you than you think. There's way more potential to you than you think. Um, that will be all gone and all lost and all wasted if you if you top yourself. There'll be a U-shaped vacuum in the universe. And if there is a heaven and hell, uh, jury's out on that one. Um, it's not the most noble act uh, either, so... If you're of religious mind, you're probably just 
convinced you shouldn't do it because it's sinful full stop i would i would agree with that it's not enough of a of a oomph reason for people who have um either not been raised to be religious or have i don't want to say outgrown sounds too patronizing but who've left their faith behind uh um, it's not enough. So I'm going to leave it there. I'm not going to force any more advice or information down your throat or tell you what to do or not tell you what to do, you know. But uh, like I say, I've been there. I know other people who've been there. And when you do come back and the right antidepressant can work like a charm, you can find yourself with a, a whole new... Um, reinvigorated appreciation of things like born again back from the dead literally almost and you have new ideas and new energy and new appreciation for food and heating and light and just talking to someone and um it can help clarify things and it's sobering sort of dispel some of the the hollywood myths in our in our heads you know all right guys if if you are watching this and feeling suicidal i would definitely recommend and not just for selfish reasons, my mental health playlist, um, which is, uh, I'll leave a comment below this and pin it, which means it stays at the top of the comment thread. And that's got videos about um, depression, anxiety, depersonalization, derealization. This subject uh, is touched a little bit. But do not underestimate how much you can help people. You know? Um, I put these videos out I know most people, me included, before I started doing them, don't. They, they may it may save their life, or it, they may like it, or it, it might add value to them, or they could pass it on to someone who it helps. But they don't. They don't. It doesn't occur to them necessarily to like the video below, or or to tell you that that you've helped. In fact, it's extremely rare. But when you do get a message saying that you've saved someone's life, or or something, um, trust me, that 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 makes that alone makes life worthwhile. And you can only help people who are in real shit uh, if you've been in real shit yourself, okay? Um, it's only people like you who are going to help people in your situation because <laughs> no one else gets it, you know? Um, and even more than that, you can help in a, in a niche way because you may have... There's all kinds of ways to get suicidally depressed, but it's, you might have lost both legs... You might have got chronic depersonalization. You might be so depressed that the room tilts and you can't move. Whatever it is, um, there's plenty of people out there with the same problem, and you can be, you can be the universal solvent, or you can, you can be the person who nudges the person to call A and E instead of hanging themselves or overdosing or drinking bleach or whatever. You know, you don't get a second chance when it comes to that decision. You know? So please find someone. Sending my love to you. My videos are going to be coming back at least once a week. Um, my intention now, I know I've, there's been a bit of brand confusion before, like throwing in music and comedy, and, and but really I want to help people who are in dire straits because I can't think of anything else that's free to do almost and because I don't have any money and <laughs> uh, and that will help more and that I sort of have a vague ability for just talking at a camera um, but I'm saying stuff that I wish I would have heard or I, or I did hear and that helped you know anyway take it easy don't, don't beat yourself up or punish yourself for feeling suicidal it's you know the leading cause of death in men over 30, it's, there's plenty of reasons to feel that way. Hundreds of reasons. It's surprising everyone isn't, in a way. But that's not the way, man. You're better than that. That's not the way to go. Um, and I'll close on... Have I said that a few times? But, you know, fuck it. And your suicidal thoughts are just thoughts. If you sit down to meditate for half an hour, you will... Fail colossally, probably, 
But you will realize that one minute your mind is saying, kill yourself. And then literally five seconds later, you've got a song in your head that you haven't heard for 10 years and all your attention's on that. And then it's on something you said yesterday, I wish you hadn't said. And then it's on what's going on tomorrow. And it's you completely lost the suicidal thing. But then the suicidal thought hits. And obviously because it's suicidal, it's got it's powerful content and context. Powerful content, as some of the um, YouTubers say. But it is just a thought, isn't it? It's just a thought. Please call someone. Goodbye.